Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Creation Podcast, a show where we discuss the science that confirms scripture. I'm your host, Ivana, and my guest today is Dr. Brian Thomas, ICR research scientist and paleobiochemist. Glad to have you here, Dr. Thomas. Well, it's my pleasure. Thanks. Yes. Well, today we wanted to answer a pretty common question that we receive, and it is, are dinosaurs in the Bible? So I know you know quite a bit about these incredible creatures. So let's just start simply. Where do dinosaurs fit in when we talk about creation week? Oh, right. Um, So going from the biblical text, uh, starting there, we have creation week day. Well, let's see. Which day were the animals made? Pop quiz, Ivana. Animals, land animals, day? Six. Day six. Okay, so it says all the, all the great creatures mm-hmm. uh, were made on day six. They're in Genesis chapter one. Mm-hmm. And so um, that, I mean, that's a broad term, right? Great creatures. Right. But that would, in, that would include dinosaurs mm-hmm. as well as bears, I guess. Uh, you mm-hmm. know. So really it's just saying the domestic animals, the wild animals, and all the animals, mm-hmm. everything that moves around on the earth, that's the animals. So, so that, that encompasses, that would include dinosaurs. Okay. And then uh, later on, Genesis chapters 6, 7, and 8 describe this big old Noah's flood mm-hmm. that would have inundated and buried, uh, maybe, probably, possibly, mm-hmm. um, those great creatures, that the individuals that did not make it on the ark, those yeah. are the ones that got that got destroyed in the flood. Mm-hmm. Um, Peter says it like this in 2 Peter 3, the world that then existed perished being flooded with water. Mm-hmm. The whole world mm-hmm. perished, dinosaurs included. Mm-hmm. And so when did that happen? About 1,656 years after creation. That's when the flood happened, according mm-hmm. to the chronology that's in Genesis itself. Mm-hmm. So biblically created day six, uh, b- bunches of them would have been flooded, maybe even buried. I think that's where the flood fossils, mm-hmm. I think that's where the fossils come from, right. is that flood. Um, because the rock layers that contain them are just so vast, extensive, <laughs> and they go for hundreds of square miles, and nothing like that happens today. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, so so something happened in the past that was very different, very unique, and involved a lot of water, mm-hmm. a lot of mud. Mm-hmm. We think it's Noah's Ark, Noah's flood. Mm. <laughs> That's great. Thank you for that overview. Um, so now that we mentioned that, evolutionary scientists, they claim that dinosaurs lived millions of years before humans ever arrived on the scene. Uh, so should we agree with that or see that as holding to any kind of truth? Well, it's tricky, isn't it? It's tough because everyone knows dinosaurs lived and died mm-hmm. million, tens of millions of years before humans ever evolved and came on the scene. Mm-hmm. But we're here to say, wait a minute, that's a completely different chronology mm-hmm. you know, that, the, than that which the scripture supplies. Right. So we have this biblical chronology of thousands of years, totally different than the secular chronology. So, so some of us, like me, have to really dig in and decide who's right, mm-hmm. which chronology am I going to go with right. and why. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for me... I went on this five-year-long journey where I investigated the, the pros and cons of, uh, you know, of the, the deep time chronology mm-hmm. that everyone believes. Mm-hmm. You know what the biggest con was for me? The biggest problem with, with it was if I reject this and go with the Bible's short chronology, mm-hmm. everybody's going to laugh at me. Yeah. It's personal. Right. It wasn't... Based on... It wasn't scientific truth, at yeah. all. It, I look back on it, I'm like, uh, wait a minute. I was pressure. just scared of being laughed at. <laughs> yeah. I'm just scared of being an outcast. Yeah. And that's a powerful motivator. Hmm. It really is. Hmm. So, but I was like, I've made, I, one day I made a decision. If the data points to the Bible, right. I'm going to go with that. I'm just going to go with it. Mm-hmm. And if I don't get jobs because of that, okay. If I don't have certain friends because of it, you know, that's their, that's their loss. <laughs> or, you know, I just had to, I just had to yeah. go with, uh, with the truth. Mm-hmm. And that's what I found on that was the truth. Mm-hmm. Pointing to recent creation, recent flood. Um, what was the question? So for our listeners, you know, should Christians agree with that? Or, you know, how do we... Um make our decision on that, if there's any weight to that idea? Well, the weight is mostly 
social pressure mm -hmm. <laughs> because there's not there's not any good science mm -hmm. uh, to back that up. So we have a separate podcast that talks about really good science that mm -hmm. supports the recent view, the, the recent flooding view of, of how these dinosaur fossils formed. And that is uh, through the original biomaterials that they still contain. I mean, we're talking about proteins still in the bones. Mm -hmm. Proteins still on the bones. Yeah. Skin, you know, is still there. And so that looks recent, looks recently deposited. So that just flies in the face of the whole secular construct. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a good talking point. You know, if it's really, if we really, as Christians, have to go with mm -hmm. the tens of millions of years, yeah. A, then we, that means we have to um, take scissors to the Bible mm -hmm. that we say we believe, mm -hmm. and B, we go against the actual science of tissue decay, which shows that proteins can't last mm -hmm. a million years. And so, and those proteins are found throughout the rock record. Uh, so, m my short answer is no, Yeah. but... <laughs> you've got to find out for yourself. People have to investigate it yeah. and answer their own questions. Mm -hmm. And it's like, here's my objection. I would like to believe the Bible maybe, but this is standing in the way. And that's what we're here to do is to help you find a yeah. different perspective on how to find an answer to this, to this objection that you've got. Um, but I would encourage folks to don't be lazy. Yeah. Don't just let that objection linger. Spend the time. There are answers out there. Mm -hmm. Dig in and get that answer. Find it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, even for me personally, I actually grew up, I went through public schooling, and so the same idea of any time I had heard about science, specifically in relation to dinosaurs or the age of the earth and things of that nature, um, I definitely was taught, you know, the old earth view. And it's just interesting as I've grown in my own spiritual walk and reading in the Bible and trying to fully understand that if the Bible is true, all of it, 100%, mm. and God is true, 100%, um, do these two things come together? And so you've hit on it a little bit, um, but could you talk about how dinosaurs are mentioned in the Bible? I'm, I'm thinking, you know, let's go past creation and maybe talk about some pas passages from Job or other mm -hmm. areas. Yeah, sure. So picking up on that um, timeline, mm -hmm. uh, created day six, Flooded 1,656 years later, um, but there were a few on the ark, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, let's say there's a few representative dinosaurs on the ark, um, along with representative of each basic created kind. Mm -hmm. By the way, is that even feasible? We have a whole book called Noah's Ark, A Feasibility <laughs> Study, mm -hmm. and um, uh, the author of that book has calculated um, and estimated that there's only 70 or so basic kinds of dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. And so you could fit any and all of them into one corner of one of the three decks of Noah's Ark. And you could fit all the animals, both extinct and extant, into just two of the three decks of Noah's Ark, mm -hmm. leaving an entire third of the volume of the Ark available for food and extra space. So yeah, feasible. What about the sauropods? They were 100 feet long plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but those were the 30, 40-year-old sauropods. You don't have to bring the old dinosaurs mm -hmm. onto the ark. Bring the young ones because they need to repopulate the earth after the flood anyways. Mm -hmm. So you want um, the juveniles on board, and so that's what we think God would have. This is very, it's very feasible. Mm -hmm. But that means they would have survived maybe for a time after the flood. They would have dispersed themselves along with the other animals mm -hmm. and plants. Um, across this new post-flood world, mm -hmm. taking centuries to migrate to their preferred habitats. And um, we think those were wetlands based on the kinds of fossils that are excavated right alongside dinosaur bones, mm -hmm. like um, turtles and uh, soft-shell turtles, which are aquatic, fish, shark teeth, um, clams, mm -hmm. and swamp plants. So based on those yeah. fossils, we think dinosaurs lived in preferred swampy habitats. Mm -hmm. And um, like you said, Job Job has, Job has, is it. Job chapter 40, starting in verse 15. Behold now behemoth, which I made alongside you, God says to Job. Mm -hmm. And so then it goes on to describe behemoth. And it's like, what is this thing? Mm -hmm. Of course, 
translator's notes sometimes say, possibly a hippopotamus. Mm -hmm. But then it says in the text that he, he's the chief of the ways of God, meaning the most impressive thing, land animal God ever made. Mm -hmm. And um, he inspires fear and awe. He's so great and grand. Mm -hmm. And he has a tail like a cedar. You know, a cedar is a tree. Yes. With a, <laughs> and so, you know, I went to the zoo and checked out the some of these uh, hippo tails. Yeah. And they're just like little flappy things. Yeah. And they don't they don't remind me of a tree in any way. No. <laughs> so so uh, I think if you take all the anatomical clues mm -hmm. offered in Job 40 for mm -hmm. Behemoth, the best animal match uh, we think is a dinosaur and specifically a sauropod. Mm -hmm. Even more specifically, some of the sauropods had taller shoulders, but this one uh, has his strength is in his hips. And so we know that the Diplodocus type, um, Apatosaurus, et cetera, mm -hmm. sauropods, the tallest point on their bodies was their hip. And they could pivot on that hip. They could raise up their front legs on that, you know, uh, yeah. pivoting on that hip and use their tail as a tripod. Mm, I yeah. did not know that. Yeah. So they could actually plant their tail, so wow. to speak, and use it as an anchor, for, as a third leg. And it really would look like a tree, <laughs> you know, yeah. a leaning tree. So... Uh, so we think it's, we think it's a, uh, sauropod dinosaur. Um, they're described in Job. It's the best match of all the anatomical mm -hmm. details. But that means Job knew about this creature. <laughs> that means Job as a human, as a man interacted mm -hmm. with, had some kind of knowledge of mm -hmm. probably firsthand knowledge. Otherwise, why would God talk about this creature mm -hmm. as though Job had firsthand experience with it? Uh, like he did with the ostrich, with the the, the deer, with the, an array of other animals mm -hmm. that are discussed in um, in those later chapters in the book of Job, and so, and God is whole. God's whole argument is, look how great this creature is, and therefore how much greater would be the creator of that creature. Mm -hmm. So you got to have a real creature. It's not a. It's not just a poem. Right. You know, it may be expressed poetically, but it's it's truth. It's, it's actual animals mm -hmm. talked about um, there, and uh, in the whole in the whole passage. So I think I think it was a real um, a real dinosaur there, alive with men mm -hmm. in the Bible itself. And you know what that aligns with? Records from our ancients. They wrote down encounters with dragons. Mm -hmm. You know, and they wrote down uh, they they did all kinds of artwork throughout. Every culture has its own legends of dragons and mm -hmm. um, and its own artwork. Uh, so I think I think they went extinct though, um, mm -hmm. one by one, place by place, as the climate changed, as people moved in. This is what we do: we get rid of the threatening creatures first. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people moved in, got rid of the threatening dinosaurs as they yeah. did, and they drained. We drained swamps so we could make places habitable. Mm. And so we, we, we tend to drain wetlands, which removes the habitat. Right, preferred habitat. Yeah, mm -hmm. for, for not just dinosaurs, but a lot of creatures. So I think they're pretty much gone from the earth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could you also talk about Leviathan? I know that that's a, a name that people will also throw out whenever they're talking about dinosaurs in the Bible. Well, yeah, you just keep reading in Job. You get to the yes. next chapter, Old and dinosaurs. there's yeah. there's, uh, there's Leviathan. And it's got a it's got an interesting description. Um, it's got a lot of description mm -hmm. there also um, of its habitat mm -hmm. as well as habit. Its habitat was mostly sea, so it's a sea monster. Okay, mm -hmm. but it's spoken of as though it was a real live thing, not a not a fictional creature. And again, God says, "Now look at this creature." This thing is absolutely terrifying. Look at all its teeth. Mm -hmm. So we know it had lots of scary teeth. Mm -hmm. So we think maybe it was a you know T Rex or something. But this one preferred water. Mm -hmm. But it, there's one passage that says it leaves its marks in the mire. Mire mm -hmm. meaning mud. Mm -hmm. So it was amphibious. So it would mm -hmm. walk. It could climb up on Which on is land. Definitely on. terrifying. Because I can't run away from it. It came on land. That scares me. Yeah. <laughs> Well, good thing we don't live in the yes, time of monsters anymore. We can we can, <laughs> we can party on the beach and yes. not be too scared. 
Thank you. It's so interesting, um, and I'm I'm grateful that you're able to share with us that there are some explanations here, you know, especially for Christians, um, being able to connect the two, even if it's not maybe mentioned in our terms because the word dinosaur didn't come until much later, um, but being able to connect the two. So thank you so much. Is there anything else that you would share or encourage with our audience as far as understanding dinosaurs and the Bible? The age thing is the big, is the, is the, I think that's the tip of the spear point, if you will. Doesn't that fly in the face of everything we're told about these fossils? I mean, mm -hmm. the fossils are from rock layers that are supposed to be tens of millions of years or more mm -hmm. of millions of years old. So it, long before humans ever came about. So how do we reconcile these things? Um, and the answer is, I think we've got to put the flood back into our brains, back mm -hmm. into our thinking. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Peter said this, Second Peter 3, for these things that the scoffers, beware the scoffers will come, he says, and these things they'll willfully forget. So, they're, so they're, they, they push this out of their brains. Mm -hmm. They willfully forget that the, um, by the word of God the heavens were created and the earth. And they'll willfully forget the creation, mm -hmm. you know, and that they'll willfully forget that that, that by the same waters, the earth was destroyed. Mm -hmm. We now live in a day and age that Peter foretold, saying that the scoffers will come, and he's telling Christians in that passage in 2 Peter 3, uh, pay attention to what the prophets and apostles said about world history. Get your thinking from the Bible. Mm -hmm. Don't take it from the world, because this is just a world of sinners and we're just making stuff up, mm -hmm. and so it's a it's a it's a construct, you know, a, a, a fake creation account uh, that that excludes God, you know, and so Peter's saying, yeah, jettison all that and get back to the Bible, mm -hmm. and now if you do that, what do you have? You have the flood is back on the table, and the flood explains the rock layers. That's where we get. That's why Sarcosuchus was buried in the first place. That's mm -hmm. why Spinosaurus was buried in the first place, the flood layers. So if the flood explains these things, then boom, we bring all this, you know, think of history as an accordion. If you've got these billions of years of, you know, version of history, you accordion that all down <laughs> to 6,000 years, mm -hmm. well, boom, they, now you've got dinosaurs right alongside mankind, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's what the Bible teaches. So the, So... So go with what Peter says, and that that allows you to access fossils as ways to explain uh, what what we have in the scripture as far as extinct creatures. We could also talk about flying reptiles that are also in Isaiah, but that's maybe for another day. <laughs> One of the probably most common objections we'll hear is, why don't we find human remains or fossils with dinosaur fossils? Can you explain some of that? Well, I can try. Okay. Um, <laughs> And my first, my first observation in relation to that question mm -hmm. is, okay, why would we, basically, why would we expect humans, human remains, to be buried alongside dinosaur fossils mm -hmm. um, if there's no deer and dogs buried alongside dinosaur fossils? In other words, uh, there's an order to the fossil record. Mm -hmm. And um, it looks like we have wetland creatures and lake lacustrine creatures and even some sea creatures buried mm -hmm. all together with, mm -hmm. with these dinosaur layers. But we don't have hard ground living creatures, mm -hmm. deer, dogs, people, camels. They're in different layers. Yeah. So something about, so, so the question really kind of assumes that mm -hmm. you might find any creature mixed with any other creature right. anywhere, and that's just not the case. Mm -hmm. So we have seafloor creatures at the bottom most layers, mm -hmm. shallow marine creatures mm -hmm. for many, many layers, then wetlands, mm -hmm. then at the very top layers, finally, we mm -hmm. see hard ground living creatures. Mm -hmm. um, and so we think this reflects the order of deposition during the flood year. The first creatures to get buried are those that are already right. stuck on the ocean floor. Mm -hmm. Boom, they get buried with seafloor sediments moving at, at great pace. And then finally these floodwaters move up onto the continent. We think it was a single continent, a single landmass that God originally created. That gets buried. 
partially buried, mm-hmm. and then then we have uh, then it, at, at day one hundred and fifty, at the highest point of the flood, according to the scripture. Now we finally get these waters coming up over the high ground, mm-hmm. and that's where the people would have been. Yeah. And um, so wherever we find camels, deer, dogs, bears, etc., that's where we ought to look for the human fossils. Mm-hmm. I think they're there. But um, we do need more workers to to we need more workers willing to like see what actually is there. Mm-hmm. Because if I'm an evolutionist, okay, and I find a I find some person's pinky bone, but it's in the wrong layer, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna I'm gonna say, well, there was some animal that had a human pinky bone because I know that because that's what they've already said with um, uh, with human bones in in Africa. And they attribute them to ape, okay. to belonging to an ape, you know, but they don't need to. They don't need to do that. Uh, so, does that help? Yeah, I think that's a great explanation. That if, especially with a flood perspective, then it would make sense of the evidence that we're seeing in the layers, um, of the order of the fossils, like you mentioned. Right. Yeah. So, so we might expect to see human fossils, but if they're there. They'd be buried with in, in the uppermost layers mm-hmm. where we find other hard ground living creatures. And uh, that's an area of research I would, I would encourage mm-hmm. listeners to. If you're going to go into the sciences, go look for the human fossils. Yeah. That would be fun to find. That's neat. And let us know when you find them. That's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I did want to just say as we're closing out, um, thank you for your time and thank you for sharing with us about this intriguing topic. And I think it's just really encouraging for us to know that as Christians, we can't get scared when we hear the words dinosaurs, um, that we are able to see we have a real explanation for these creatures. Um, And you actually have a small booklet about this topic. Um, This is actually one of the first things I read of yours, Um, but it's Dinosaurs in the Bible. It gets right to the point, um, just to tell you a little bit more about that. Or maybe if you have someone who's asking questions, were dinosaurs in the Bible or how can Christians account for dinosaurs, maybe gift them that booklet and you can find that on our website. If you're ever here in Dallas, of course, pick it up at our Discovery Center. Uh, But thank you again and thank you to all of our listeners and viewers. You can find this podcast and other episodes on YouTube or anywhere else you might find your podcast. If you have additional questions, maybe you want to hear about these flying reptiles, send us a message on social media. Don't forget to leave us a review, give us a rating, and subscribe for future episodes. But I'm Yvonne and you'll see us next time on the Creation Podcast.